Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Good morning, I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. Karen, the countdown is on for the highly anticipated presidential debate. Final preparations are underway for Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. Bloomberg's David Gura begins our team coverage from Pennsylvania. It is the only debate between Vice President Harris and President Trump that's on the calendar. And it will take place at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia with no audience. David Muir and Lindsay Davis of ABC News are the moderators. The debate is expected to last 90 minutes with no opening statements. There will be two commercial breaks. According to ABC News, the candidates will get two minutes to answer each question with additional time for rebuttals. Harris and Trump will stand at podiums, and after winning a coin toss, Trump will get the last word, the final closing statement. And each candidate's mic will be muted when the other one is speaking, just like in the first debate of this campaign between Trump and President Biden. In Philadelphia, David Gura, Bloomberg Radio. All right, David, thank you. Well, continuing team coverage now, Bloomberg's Amy Morris is in Washington looking at how the candidates are preparing. Amy. Vice President Harris's strategy in part is reportedly to hold former President Trump accountable while maintaining a calm demeanor on stage. Harris's challenge is that she's not well-defined to a lot of potential voters. Donald Trump, on the other hand, is quite well-defined. People know him. His strategy may be to change some perceptions and soften his edge a bit. Bob McNally is a former White House energy advisor to President George W. Bush, and he told Bloomberg News what he'd be listening for. I hope they get pressed on their respective plans Uh, for Iran, because in terms of what's going to affect the pump price for you, me, and our neighbors, I think it has to do with Iran. Bob McNally talking with Bloomberg's Joe Matthew. This debate is the biggest opportunity the candidates may have to reset the conversation and their image now that the conventions are over and officials anticipate a huge viewing audience. In Washington, Amy Morris, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Amy, thank you. I'll stay with Bloomberg for coverage of the ABC News presidential debate with a special edition of Balance of Power with Joe Matthew and Kaylee Lines beginning at 8 p.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg Radio and Television. Let's turn to markets now, Karen. Stocks began the week in bullish fashion. All three major indexes gained at least 1%. But Cameron Dawson, chief investment officer at New Edge Wealth, remains cautious. We don't think that we are out of the woods for this continued volatility. It's good to remember that seasonality is still a headwind, effectively up until the election. Post the election, we typically see better markets. So seasonality remains at the same time is that we went into this with really stretched valuation, positioning and sentiment, which just means there's still some hands to shake loose. New Edge Wealth's Cameron Dawson says the next key moment for tomorrow uh, for the markets is tomorrow when we get the August Consumer Price Index. Well, looking at company news now, Nathan, shares of Oracle surging 8.5% in early trading. The software company reported quarterly profit and bookings that topped estimates. Artificial intelligence demand is continuing to boost Oracle's cloud computing business. We have legal news this morning involving some tech heavyweights, Karen. Google has lost its bid to topple a $2.6 billion European Union fine for abusing its monopoly power to crush rival shopping services. The EU's Court of Justice in Luxembourg backed a landmark 2017 decision, which found the U.S. tech giant illegally leveraged its search engine dominance to give a higher ranking to its own product listings. And Nathan, Apple has lost its court fight over a nearly $14.5 billion Irish tax bill. That same court in Luxembourg backed a landmark 2016 decision that Ireland broke state aid law by giving the iPhone maker an unfair advantage. That legal setback comes a day after Apple introduced the latest version of its flagship device, the iPhone 16. And despite modest hardware upgrades, CEO Tim Cook insists the new phone was built from the ground up with AI in mind. Its power and capability enable us to get so much done, like connecting with our family and friends, staying productive on the go, and capturing life's special moments. Apple intelligence will supercharge these experiences and so many more. It puts powerful generative models right at the core of your iPhone. Now, along with the iPhone, Apple CEO Tim Cook unveiled a new version of the smart watch with a bigger screen and the ability to detect sleep apnea. Cook also touted new software that can turn AirPods into hearing aids. 
Well, Nathan, U.S. banking regulators have reduced the amount of new capital required for the big banks by nearly half. And we get more from Bloomberg's Doug Krisner. We are told the banks now face a 9 percent increase versus the original plan to raise required capital by 19 percent. These are the U.S. global systemically important banks like Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase. They must hold a cushion against unexpected losses and financial shocks. And the sharp reductions to capital mandates is a win since the banks unleashed one of their fiercest lobbying campaigns after the plan's introduction last year. The plan will be subject to a 60-day comment period, and Fed Chair Jay Powell has said final adoption might not take place until well into next year. In New York, I'm Doug Krisner, Bloomberg Radio. Thank you, Doug. Turning to Washington, the House has passed a bill aimed at blacklisting Chinese biotech companies and their U.S. subsidiaries. The bill, dubbed the Biosecure Act, was approved by a vote of 306 to 81. It overcame a last-ditch lobbying effort from Massachusetts Democrat Jim McGovern, who says it punishes companies with no clear standard. We get more from Bloomberg's Derek Wallbank. This is one of several pieces of legislation the U.S. House is taking up this week in uh, what basically could be called a China week. Uh, there's a lot of focus ahead of the election on China. It's an area where uh, Republicans and Democrats actually tend to agree. And so this winds up being a lot of messaging legislation. Now, the thing with messaging legislation is that it occasionally can become law. And Bloomberg's Derek Wallbank reports this bill targets five companies to start, including Complete Genomics. That's a Silicon Valley-based subsidiary area of China's MGI Tech. The bill's prospects are less clear in the Senate, but there has been discussion of adding it to the must-pass annual defense policy bill. Well, Nathan, we may be minutes away from liftoff for the latest private crew to space flight for SpaceX. Polaris Dawn had to cancel its first launch window from Kennedy Space Center at 3.38 a.m. Wall Street time due to unfavorable weather. The next opportunity is at 5.23 a.m. Four astronauts are on board for this mission, which will include the first fully commercial spacewalk. If SpaceX misses its chance this hour, it'll have one more opportunity to take off this morning at 7.00. 7.09 a.m. Wall Street time. And it's time now for a look at some of the other stories making news in New York and around the world. For that, we're joined by Bloomberg's John Tucker. John, good morning. And good morning, Karen. Officials are tracking tropical storm Francine as she churns in the Gulf of Mexico. Her outer bands will impact the Texas coastline as it veers eastward through Louisiana's basin and then to the states just north. Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry had some words of warning. We want everyone in a state to be cautious and vigilant. We don't want you, we don't want to downplay this event, but we also do not want people to panic. The storm could become a category 2 hurricane by Wednesday when it's expected to make landfall. The AP reports at least 40 people were killed, 60 wounded in an Israeli strike early today that left craters up to 32 feet deep in a humanitarian area of the Gaza Strip. Israel disputes the death toll, said it targeted significant Hamas militants. There's a new U.S. senator. It follows the resignation of New Jersey Democrat Bob Menendez. More from Bloomberg Steve Podisk. George Helmy, a Democrat and former chief of staff to New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, has been sworn in and will serve in office for about two months until the November election. Murphy appointed Helmy to the temporary role after Menendez resigned in August after he was convicted on corruption charges. Helmy said he had never sought and would never seek elected office. He said he would focus on serving the public during his short stint in the Senate. In Washington, Steve Potisk, Bloomberg Radio. And he is perhaps best known for lending his voice to one of the greatest villains of villains in the history of cinema. No, I am the father. The legendary actor James Earl Jones has died. He was one of those rare artists who'd won an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award. James Earl Jones was 93 years old. Global News, 24 hours a day, whenever you want it, with Bloomberg News Now. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg. Karen. All right, John, thank you. for the Bloomberg Sports Update with John Stashauer. John, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Unlike a year ago, Aaron Rodgers did not get hurt in a Jets season opening Monday night game. Went 13 for 21, 167 yards, a touchdown pass, and an interception. The Jets facing one of the NFL's best teams, even though the 49ers' biggest star, Christian McCaffrey, 
played havoc with thousands of fantasy football owners by being a late scratch with a leg injury. The Niners got 147 rushing yards from his backup, Jordan Mason. They beat the Jets 32-19. Jake Moody kicked six field goals. Alan Lazard scored two Jet TDs, one from Rodgers and one meaningless one at the end from backup QB Tyrod Taylor. Rodgers said after the game he can play better. The day after the Dolphins, Tyreek Hill was detained by police on his way to play a game in Miami. Police and footage was released. It showed a dispute over Hill not lowering his car window and then police pulling him out of the car and at one point pushing him down to the pavement. Ed Cranepool has passed away at 79, made his Mets debut in their first season, 1962, and he was a 17-year-old who had just graduated from James Monroe High School in the Bronx. Cranepool stayed a Met for 18 years, played more games than anyone in team history. Mets in Toronto, tied 2-2, eighth inning. Alvarez at third, Lindor at first. Double play in order here. Tie game, one out. Pitch. Nimmo cuts and misses the ball. Squeaks by the catcher. Here comes Alvarez. Flip to home. Not in time. Alvarez dives in safely. And the Mets have the lead. Another wild pitch. And it is 3-2 Mets. And that was the final WHSQ, the call. Game with a total of only seven hits. The Mets have now won 10 of the last 11. They got help from the Reds, who won one to nothing in Atlanta. The Yankees back at the stadium beat Kansas City 10 to 4. Austin Wells a three-run homer, Alex Verdugo a two-run shot and the Orioles lost 12 to 3 in Boston. The Yanks now lead Baltimore by a game and a half. John Stash Allen, Bloomberg Sports, Karen Nathan. All right, John, thank you. Well, we want to welcome our listeners in New England on the all-new Bloomberg 92.9 FM. It's Boston's number one source for news on the FM dial, Bloomberg 92.9. Coast to coast on Bloomberg Radio, nationwide on Sirius XM, and around the world on Bloomberg.com and the Bloomberg Business app. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. The expectations game is set ahead of tonight's ABC News presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. With Vice President Harris, we see an economic plan, and with the former President Donald Trump, we see the Project 2025 agenda. I expect to see President Trump... Uh, have a, a command of the subjects that are being discussed. And I expect to see uh, Kamala Harris doing some rote memorization, regurgitation, because she's incapable of thinking on her feet. That was Maryland Governor Wes Moore on the Harris side and Congressman Derek Van Orden speaking to ABC News for the Trump camp ahead of tonight's debate. This morning, we are joined by Terry Haynes, the founder of Pangea Policy. Terry, good debate morning. We've heard the expectations. What are you going to be listening for tonight? Uh, well, Nathan, good morning. Uh, you know they're both underdogs, according to them, and that's a yeah, that's that's a time honored uh, uh, that's a time honored tactic. Uh, so uh, there we are. But what I'm going to be listening for, uh, uh, by and large, is whether or not Harris meets or exceeds the test of being presidential uh, and passing the test with voters that, you know, she's a plausible president. I'm not suggesting she's implausible today. I'm only suggesting that, you know, as the reporter pointed out before, uh, you know, people don't know much less about her than they know about President Trump. Uh, so there's that. For Trump, I'm looking for uh, something a little bit different. Um, he's, by contrast, very, very well known. Uh, but, you know, he's got to uh, essentially – uh, soften those partisan edges uh, and those divisive edges uh, if he's going to gain any more votes out of this. I think what we've seen in the campaign so far is that Harris has a floor but not yet a ceiling, whereas Trump has a very hard ceiling, uh, and he's going to have to exceed that a little bit in order to uh, in order to come away with a win. Well, the way the uh, rules are set up with the mics turned off uh, when it's not a candidate's turn to speak, who does that advantage? Uh, you know, I think it actually advantages Harris a little bit. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about how, how it uh, deprives Harris of the ability to have uh, zingers or viral moments. But uh, I think it advantages Harris a little bit uh, because what she needs to do is look calm and command and not be baited. And frankly, that gives her an opportunity to uh, collect herself if she finds herself uh, uh, being tempted by that. In contrast, you know, Trump really can't uh, kind of barge across, metaphorically speaking, barge across the stage and uh, and and try to disrupt things. So I think on balance, that's probably a, a, a plus for Harris, even though she was trying to keep the mics on. 
Besides the style points, Terry, is there going to be pressure on these candidates to answer for some of their shifts in positions? We've heard Harris sort of moderate where she is on fracking and immigration, and we've heard former President Trump kind of try to figure out where he is on abortion rights. Oh, absolutely. The uh, I think the uh, moderators absolutely do that. Uh, they, they very likely respond to the idea that uh, the, this has been a, a by and large, uh, issues-free campaign. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I expect him to dance around it a little bit. You know, the real answer with Harris, uh, I think you and I have talked about this before, but the real answer with Harris is that she was a candidate in 2020 trying to, to, to in a primary, uh, trying to get primary voters who tend to be, you know, purists, very hard left or very hard right, depending on uh, the party. Uh, whereas now she's uh, she's sitting at the head of a party that already has a platform, already has position. And, you know, so she's in a very different position. Uh, That's not to excuse her. I'm just saying, you know, that she's in a different position. Uh, Trump, of course, has been involved in, uh, but both of them have been involved, Trump also, in kind of what uh, a friend of mine calls the Oprah primary or the Oprah primary where uh, the election where everybody's trying to give away as much as possible. Uh, There's very little serious on issues. I don't expect there to be much more serious on issues, frankly, because uh, they will roll out whatever they've already rolled out. But at root, uh, this is going to be a test of Harris's fitness and, you know, Trump's demeanor, frankly. Just 15 seconds left, Terry. This is the first debate. Will it be the last? Uh, you know, I think there's possibility for another one. Uh, it depends entirely on how everybody does here. If this is a close debate, uh, both candidates may want one more. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 99.1 in Washington, Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.